Good day everyone, we will now move on to the last topic for this subject, the geological conditions necessary for construction of dumps, tunnels, buildings, and road cuttings. And I will be your reporter for today, I am Jaislyn M. Yanto. Now let's start. Most civil engineering projects involve some excavation of soils and rocks, or involve loading the earth by building on it. In some cases, the excavated rocks may be used as constructional material, and in others, rocks may form a major part of the finished product, such as motorway, cutting, or the site of a reservoir. The feasibility, the planning and design, the construction and costing, and the safety of a project may depend critically on the geological conditions where the construction will take place. I will present first the geological conditions necessary for construction of dams. But before that, let us know what is dam. A dam is a barrier that stops or restricts the flow of water or underground streams, reservoir created by dams not only suppress floods but also provide water for activities such as irrigation, human consumption, industrial use, aquaculture, and, nav and navigability. At the proposed dam site of the river valley is narrow, only a small dam is required, which means the cost of dam construction will be less. On the other hand, if the valley is wide, a bigger dam is necessary which means the construction cost will be very high. Bedrock at shallow depths To ensure its safety and stability, a dam has to necessarily rest on very strong and very stable bedrocks. If such competent bedrocks occur near the surface or at shallow depths, the foundation cost of the dam will be naturally less. On the other hand, if competent bedrocks occur at great depths, the cost of the foundation will be very high because it involves extensive work of excavation of loose overburden and concrete refilling. Competent rocks for safe foundation. If igneous rocks occurs at selected dam site, they will offer a safe basis and weak sedimentary rocks, particularly shales. Poorly cemented sandstones and limestones are naturally undesirable to serve as foundation rocks. So for the construction of dam sites, choosing rocks that are suitable for good foundation must be observed. Fourth is the effects of associated geological structures. For the stability of a dam, the occurrence of favorable geological structure is a very important requirement. Under structural geology, we have learned that those rocks bear certain inherent or original physical properties. Such characters get modified either advantageously or disadvantageously when geological structures occur in, the, in those rocks. Over time, geological structure changes occur in rocks, so it is also important to bear in mind and study the possible structural changes that will arise in the future and how it will affect the construction of the project dam. The fifth is spillway size and location. Spillway disposes the surplus river discharge. The capacity of the spillway will depend on the magnitude of the floods to be bypassed. The spillway is therefore much more important on rivers and streams with large flood potential. The last one is knowing if your project dam will be constructed in an earthquake zone. If dam is situated in an earthquake zone, its design must include earthquake forces. The type of structure best suited to resist earthquake shock without danger are earthen dams and concrete gravity dams. Now that we're done on the discussion of the geological conditions for the construction of dams, let's now move on to tunnels. What is a tunnel? A tunnel is an underground passageway dug through the surrounding soil, earth, or rock, and enclosed except for entrance and exit, commonly at each end. A pipeline is not a tunnel. 
though some recent tunnels have used immersed tube construction techniques rather than traditional tunnel boring methods. Moving on, let's discuss the geological conditions for construction of tunnels. First, the type of the rock and their strength and deformation behavior. Second, geological discontinuities and associated strength and deformation behavior. Third, groundwater conditions. Next, squeezing and swelling rock conditions. Running ground, gases in rocks, rock temperature. Lastly, topographic conditions. The first one, the type of the rock and their strength and deformation behavior. Igneous rocks. The crystalline nature of igneous rocks signifies high compressive strength with potential difficulties in rock excavations process, but can also indicate the mark competence with the advantages of decreased support to achieve an acceptable degree of stability. Next is sedimentary rocks. The effects of stress and advanced weathering and awakening by the action of water can give rise to their problems, especially where such rock type contains appreciable clay materials. Plus, type of rock is metamorphic rocks. Rock containing micaceous materials have well-defined planes of weakness and can easily split along those planes of weakness and show very rather properties in terms of both strength and deformation properties. Geological discontinuities and associated strength and deformation behavior. First in the list is folds. Folds are sometimes the natural traps of natural gases which might be harmful to the persons working in tunnels. Second is faults. The orientation of the faults in relation to tunnel line is vitally important since this govern the length of tunnel affected by the faults and its accompanying fault zones. Lastly is the joints or structural plane of weakness and greatly affects shear strength of properties of rocks and rocks masses. Third condition to consider is the conditions of the groundwater. The presence of groundwater is recognized as a major hazard in addition to causing operational difficulties in respect of tunnel and construction works. Encountering large quantities of water in weak ground conditions can lead to rapid formation of cavities around the tunnel excavation and can produce the potential for the significant quantities of wet and loose ground to flow the tunnel. Fourth one is the squeezing and swelling rock conditions. Squeezing is a type of displacement into an excavation due to stress gradient created around the tunnel by excavation, while swelling is a time-dependent process and involving physical chemical reactions with water. Next one is running ground. This is often saturated and the presence of water can encourage liquefaction when disturbed by tunneling activities. This can arise at a later stage due to the progressive collapse and formation of a significant cavity tapping a major aquifer and overlying unconsolidated saturated deposits. The sixth one is the gases that are present in rocks. Gases are frequently in the sedimentary rock. Organic-rich sedimentary rocks have significant amounts of organic material, generally in the excess of the total organic carbon. Let's move on to the next. Rock temperature. Temperature increases about 10 degrees Celsius for every 60 to 80 meters in geologically stable areas and 10 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 meters in volcanically active areas. Effective ventilation is perhaps the only means to alleviate the problem. Last but not the least for the geological conditions required for the construction of tunnel is the topographical conditions. This is the arrangement of the natural and artificial physical features of an area. We have to consider the physical features of the area where we are going to construct the tunnel so that appropriate designs and plans will be made for its realization. Now we're going to focus on 
crude cuttings and the geological conditions necessary for its construction. But first, what is road cuttings? A cut or cutting is where soil or rock from a rel relative rise along a road is removed. Cuts are typically used in road, rail, and canal construction to reduce the length and grade of a road. Here are the list of geological conditions considered in the construction of road cuttings. First is topography, second is geological structures, third is weathering, next is groundwater conditions, and last one is lithological characters. The first one is topography. Topography or the landform of a region is single most important factor that controls the selection of alignment of a road project. Topographic maps would reveal the existence of various land features like valleys and the inflowing streams, the hills and their undulations, the plateaus and the plains with all their varying configuration from place to place. Obviously, knowledge of all such features is not only important but very essential for a right alignment. Next is geological structures. The structural features of rocks, especially in those of sedimentary and metamorphic origin, have very important bearing upon the design of cuts as well as on the stability of the road as a whole. A given rock might be quite hard and otherwise sound for a cut as root foundation. Third to consider is weathering. In some cases, when the strata along or under a cut is composed of layers of rocks of different hardness, the softer layer gets weathered at a faster rate than the overlying or underlying harder rocks. This generally results in undermining which might cause lifts or falls of the whole place. Sometimes, when the top layers are weathered too heavily, the slope might experience a persistent rock fall or debris fall type of situation from above. Next to consider is groundwater conditions. It is also known that water exerts important influence on the bearing capacity of the rocks and soil. Hence, when the ground is rich with moisture, it would not bear the design loads. Unless these properties of ground have also been determined in moist conditions, sometimes there is a condition of free flow of groundwater through the soil. This is quite dangerous for the stability of the road surface laid above such soil. And the last one is the lithological character. This provides details like composition of rocks, texture of rocks, structure of rocks, and origin of rocks. And all these details are needed to be studied in order to choose the type of rocks that will be used for the construction of the road cuttings. We have now reached the last type of structure that we are going to discuss today and it is building. A building is a structure with a roof and walls standing more or less permanently in one place, such as a house or factory. Buildings come in a variety of sizes, shapes, and functions, and have been adapted throughout the history for a wide number of factors, from building materials available to weather conditions, land prices, ground conditions, specific uses, and aesthetic reasons. The following conditions might be considered in an assessment of ground conditions for the construction of buildings. First is general landforms. Second is flood risk. Next is historical or present risk of landslide and subsidence. Then soil types, drainage and runoff, frame structure, and lastly foundations. General landforms. These are the building blocks of landscapes, so measuring the morphometric properties of landforms can help evaluate how and why the physical attributes of landscapes vary over time and space. Next is 
flood risk. If construction of a new building goes ahead on a site prone to flooding, minimize the risk by ensuring the building is located on the highest section of the site, building away from natural drainage spots or channels, making the finished floor level of the lowest floor well above the maximum flood level, and installing additional land drainage for low-lying areas. Next, historical or present risk of landslides or subsidence, erosion of soil from deforestation, heavy rainfall, and poor land use control, in addition to steep slopes, add to the risk of landslides and building collapse. So it's much better to check the historical or present risk of landslides or subsidence on the area that you have chosen where you're going to construct your building. The next is soil types. Many different types of soil can be encountered on construction sites. The importance of the characteristics of soil, such as the size and nature of particles, its density and structural properties, means soil surveys are often required to inform design and construction decisions. Now let's move on to the third to the last one, drainage and runoff. Drainage is the artificial removal of water, both surface and subsurface. Drainage is often a major element of civil engineering and construction projects and is necessary to avoid flooding and other damage. Then we have here frame structure. In multi-storied building, a frame structure is provided in which the interconnected framework of slabs, beams, columns, and footings transfer the loads to the underground soil through the foundation. Different types of foundation like isolated column footing, rough foundation, or pile foundation and provide depending upon the building. Now we're down to the last one condition that is necessary for the construction of building, which is foundations. The foundation conditions of rocks and soils are, is an important consideration for determining how surface construction loads are transmitted into the ground safely and for the lifespan of the project. The main considerations are strength or bearing capacity, settlement and differential settlement, volume change of the ground due to climatic conditions, and subsidence due to natural voids beneath the foundation leading to ground failure. There are also other considerations which include weathering and alteration, aggressive ground conditions of soluble sulfate, sulfide, Low pH or high chloride content, foundation excavations, protection, and that's all. And that's all I have for my reporting today. I hope this report is helpful in some ways. That would be all. Thank you for watching and good luck to us future civil engineers.